a pleasant day STEM learners. This is again Sir Peter, her pre-calculus teacher. Now, we are on the end of our week for discussion about the hyperbola. For this part of the discussion, we will talk about the standard equation of the hyperbola center at HK. So this time, it is now not located on the origin, but the center is located anywhere on the partition plane. So at the end of this video lesson, we should be able to illustrate the standard equation of a hyperbola centered at HK. Notice that the standard equation now has x minus h parts and y minus k parts. For a horizontal and a vertical hyperbola, compare the a, a squared and b squared. They did not change position. Still, the formula has a minus sign because that is the definition of the standard equation. But observe how the x minus h part and the y minus k part changes. If the x part is positive, then that is horizontal. If the y part is positive or the y minus k part is positive, it's vertical. Consequently, if the y minus k part is negative, then it is a horizontal hyperbola. And if the x minus h part is negative, then it is a vertical hyperbola. That is the center of each example. They are located anywhere on the Cartesian plane. That is why the center is at HK. So these are the formulas that you need to remember. So again, there are two types. When it is a horizontal hyperbola, the hyperbola has a horizontal focal axis. And when it is a vertical hyperbola, the hyperbola has a vertical focal axis. So the basis is the focal axis. So these are the equations, the standard equations. And for the vertices, the k value um, retains for the horizontal hyperbola. Well, we add h plus minus a and h plus minus c for the vertices and the foci, which are both collinear with each other. While h um, k plus a and h k plus minus c is used for vertical hyperbolas. For the endpoints of the conjugate axis, of course, they will be the contrast. The other parts are also important, but we will not be discussing them anymore. Now let's have an illustrative example. Give the coordinates of the foci, the vertices, and the endpoints of the conjugate axis with equation of the hyperbola, the quantity x minus 4 squared over 9 minus the quantity y plus 1 squared over 16 is equal to 1. Based on this given example, the x part is positive and the y part is negative. Therefore, what type of hyperbola do we have? Very good. This is an example of a horizontal hyperbola. Next is to identify the center. So the center will be at HK. And since x goes along with the h value, we invert the sign of negative 4. So that is positive 4. And then we invert the sign of the k part. It's positive 1 in the formula, so it will become negative 1. For the, um, the next um, part is to determine the distances a, b, and c. So on the, in the formula, our a squared is 9. So therefore, a is positive negative 3. 16 is um, our b squared. So therefore, 
the value of P is positive, negative 4. While C is again 9 plus 16, so we get 25 and get the square root of it. So that will be positive, negative 5. Remember that it's like the Pythagorean theorem. So we also form a triple, 3, 4, 5, respectively. For the um, endpoints of the transverse axis, V sub 1 and V sub 2, we use the formula H plus minus A, K. So we retain the K value. So the K value is negative 1. And then we use H plus minus A. So the H is 4 minus 3 and 4 plus 3. So let's start with the negative. 4 minus 3 is 1. Then 4 plus 3 is 7. You can interchange. For the endpoints of the focal axis, we have F sub 1, F sub 2. And since they are collinear with the vertices, they will also have the same k value, which is negative 1. So it follows with the center. And so we use now the c value. We have 4 minus 5 and then 4 plus 5. 4 minus 5 is negative 1. Then 4 plus 5 is 9. For the endpoints of the conjugate axis, W sub 1, W sub 2, respectively, we will use the formula H, um, K plus minus B. So in here, our H is 4. So simply copy 4. And then with reference to B, we have K plus minus B. So negative 1 minus 4 is negative 5. And negative 1 plus 4 is 3. So these are now the important points in the hyperbola. We have V sub 1, V sub 2, F sub 1, F sub 2, W sub 1, and W sub 2. This is the sample graph. So observe the conjugate axis and the transverse axis drawn in color blue. So the center is located at 4, negative 1, which is on the fourth quadrant. Now, let us proceed to the next example. Give the coordinates of the foci, the vertices, and the endpoints of the conjugate axis with equation of the hyperbola the quantity y plus 2 squared over 144 minus the quantity x plus 3 squared over 25 is equal to 1. Based from the um, given equation of the hyperbola, what type of hyperbola do we have? Nice. It is a vertical hyperbola. Why? The reason is the y part is positive and the x part is negative. Now, let us identify the center at hk. Remember that h always goes along with the x value. So it's we invert the sign of positive 3. So in the formula, it's positive. But in the center, it's negative, negative 3. And for the ordinate of the center, we get it from y minus k part, and since it is positive 2 here, on the center, we will write it as the opposite sign, which is negative 2. So therefore, the center of the hyperbola is located at negative 3, negative 2. Next is to determine the distances a and b, respectively, based from the formula. The a squared is located on the y minus k part. So we have the square root of 144. That is positive, negative 12. And 
the square root of 25 is positive, negative 5. To get C, we get the square of 12 and 5. You add them. So we have 144 plus 25. Then get the square root. So that will be the square root of 169, which is positive, negative 13. Now, for our endpoints of the transverse axis, V sub 1, V sub 2, or the vertices, we follow the formula age, k plus minus a. So we retain the age value negative 3. And then with reference to a, um, we add it to the k value. So negative 2 minus 12 and negative 2 plus 12. So negative 2 minus 12 is negative 14. And negative 2 plus 12 is positive. Then, of course, we know that the foci, f sub 1 and f sub 2 respectively, are collinear with the vertices. So they will share the same abscissas, which is negative 3, or the h value. And then we, in reference with c, we add and subtract negative 2. So negative 2 minus 13 with c value. So that is negative 15. Then negative 2 plus 13 is 11. Lastly, let us determine the endpoints of the conjugate axis, which are W sub 1 and W sub 2, respectively. So this time, we use the formula H plus minus B, K. So the K value will retain. And in the given example, the k value is negative 2. To find now our um, abscissa, we refer it to the b distance. So negative 3 minus 5, then negative 3 plus 5. So the first coordinate is negative 8, 2. Then negative 3 plus 5 is 2, negative 2. So, these are now the three important points, the foci, the vertices, and the endpoints of the conjugate axis of the given equation. And this is how the graph of the quantity y plus 2 squared over 144 minus the quantity x plus 3 squared over 25 is equal to 1. Notice that the center is located on the third quadrant. The blue lines here represents the um, conjugate and the um, transverse axis, respectively. And look at the red lines. These are also the asymptotes. So when you draw the um, vertical hyperbola with branches, which opens upward and downward, so they always go along with the asymptotes. So I hope um, these examples are enough already for you to understand the coordinates of those points. So these are the references used in this presentation. I hope you learned something from our three video lessons, the definition of the hyperbola, the standard equation of the hyperbola center at zero, zero, and the standard equation of the hyperbola center at HK, which we discuss on this video lesson. So we are now done with week number four for our next video lesson. We will now proceed to week number five, which is identifying a conic section by its general equation and solving situational problems involving conics. So again, this is Sir Peter, your pre-calculus teacher.